Uh, yeah, I, I can. I, why don't I split? I, um, I'll, if you don't need yours, then I'll just. I've got to top mine off. So. I've had several friends who have done a Kilimanjaro. They said it was the hardest thing they did, but it was also the, the most uh, uh, beautiful. And so um, there's this kind of parallel thing happening where uh, this crazy big mountain uh, that I've been looking at for 15 years, and then we have this crazy thing of wanting to uh, change the lives of 5,000 uh, communities, which is like over the top big. Yeah, there's really several different things that we hope to accomplish in the training center. We really wanted to show them a lifestyle. Uh, a lot of people would come in when they have parasites or they have maybe some blood sugar issues or they're constantly getting sick. And um, we would feed them the best that we growing out of the garden. And at the end of it, they would just say, man, I, I just don't feel as vulnerable. The model that we're working with um, and the four pillars, nutrition, organic gardening, uh, herbal medicine and income generation, our biggest um, problem is really trying to uh, scale uh, the program to the amount of demand. When we started talking about 5,000 uh, life gardens, it just kind of got me excited to do uh, this mountain and um, really um, kind of accomplish the same sort of thing so people would be encouraged. One, two, three, say Kilimanjaro Akuna Matata. Pole, pole. Pole, pole. Me being the oldest person, uh, 68, on the team, uh, I knew I needed to do a little bit of training. And so I probably an hour to an hour and a half a day doing different types of trainings. You have to pour every bit of who you are into this if you're going to take it to the top. Well, the first day was pretty interesting. You know, we went about uh, 11, 12 kilometers, and um, I, I, it seemed like it was the longest 11, 12 kilometers I've been on, and, and I can ever remember. I'm uh, very excited. All the things that I talked about, about you know, it being, you know, this being a challenge and people dealing with challenges all over the world. Um, how do they overcome? Do they? Can they keep at it? Ambrose and I have been working together for um, probably 13 years. His mom was one of the first organic farmers in his tribe, the Maasai tribe. The major problem that we had back in the community was people getting sick and food security. This is a problem that is, exists in the country, the whole of Kenya, and even the whole of the continent. In our training center here in Kitale, we invite people from different parts. We take them through an in-person training. They go back to their communities and start establishing some life gardens in their community. So the purpose of the climb was to create awareness about what we are doing with the communities and also raising funds to support life gardens in Africa and the whole world. The other person that we wanted to invite was Joyce, who is just uh, an amazing gal. 
has shown that anybody can rise above poverty and make a significance. We felt that she was a good candidate that uh, can do great uh, uh, work in the organization. Joyce, um, you know, she went from just no knowledge uh, to having 800 garden beds in a women's prison of only 200 women. And a um, lot of obstacles to overcome there, but she did it. All of those things we do in our projects, we, we try to create um, this thing of hope for the future and, um, and uh, really try to look at, uh, you know, they just, you just got to keep doing the right things. Uh, the first day was good. Uh, everybody looked energetic and uh, we enjoyed the rainforest. And uh, the last one kilometer was uh, a bit tough as people were exhausted, but we finally made it and everybody was just very okay. So it was a good day. And being the first day, at least we learned a few things on how we should proceed with the next of our, or, or with the rest of the, of the climbing. So it was good. The three principles are one, you have to take enough water, walk slowly by slowly, we say pole pole, and then the third one, you have to eat as much as you can. Since the first day, I think I said this, I've already prepared my mind to be up there. So uh, that's keeping me going, going, going. A real lion never gives up. Today we are we started with a lot of energy, but as we go, the higher we go, the tougher it becomes. The walking poles, they have really helped me and they have kept me going. The hard part for me is to stay present emotionally and spiritually because sometimes you're so absorbed in your own just, you know, pain and exhaustion and remembering that you can fail and being grateful for uh, each day and each step. So today, starting to here to Shira, yeah, well, up to Lava Tower, 4,600 meters, then go down 3,900 feet, call name is the Barranco. The higher we go, the cooler it becomes. And uh, the thing that helped me so much, I carried my Maasai sheet. So I wrapped myself inside, then I entered the sleeping bag. In the morning, I was somehow chilly but now i'm feeling confident because i see the sun has just rose and uh, it's getting warmer so i know we will make it to where the, to the next camp yeah i think everybody really uh, had a day or two that were a little tougher than others joyce who is just uh, an amazing gal uh, she uh, kind of developed some cold symptoms and was losing energy it uh, just shows you the resilience in the body what the body can accomplish is like beyond the average person's understanding.
It was cold. Um, Chad left some water outside and it was frozen in the morning. So it's just basically innovating, trying to get it going. And uh, But the good news is we get 11 hours in the tent, and so it's just kind of, you know, you just make it up over the long haul. This weather is such a gift. It's great. I looked at kind of the third day at the mountain and I thought, how in the world are we gonna get up there? All I could do is just move my feet forward, knowing that I was running pretty close on E. And yet everybody was there. Everybody was kind of moving forward. You never could really tell where the camps were. It, they, they just seemed to be over the next hill. It was really, um, great to be at the uh, camp at the end of the day. That was the thing that really you looked forward to. After we ran out of vegetation, every day was pretty challenging because the oxygen levels were dropping. And so for myself, it wasn't so much huge highs and lows. It was just this thing of how are we going to get past the next 500 feet? And so this forced you to be in the moment and be aware of what was going on around you. Yeah, the Bronco Wall is really the um, kind of unknown entity in the whole trip because it, um, it looks and is kind of scary. It's the vertical part, hand over hand uh, climbing. Below us, the whole horizon is covered with clouds. The only thing that I think would have stopped us was an injury. Careful, careful. Yeah. Don't shake, don't shake. You okay? Huh? Don't shake. Don't shake. There we go. There. Yeah. There we go. Oh, thank you. That's right. For me, the fourth and the fifth day were probably the hardest in which um, I had pushed everything at, at this thing. You know, I was doing a lot of meditative stuff. I was doing a lot of praying. That was like totally adrenaline, man. Like, oh. Uh, I just did it like uh, drinking a cup of tea. I tell you, I was praying and I was um, taking it literally one step at a time. Everybody was super supportive. It was like so uh, neat to be kind of walking together, knowing the, the physical necessities of climbing Kilimanjaro is one thing, but getting the headspace and having the right people to climb with you, you know, and just say, we're in this thing together and, and we're going to enjoy it. That was the hardest thing we've ever done. Um, it was down. steep, but uh, it was awesome. I did not die, and so I consider it a victory. Um, it teaches you about the healthy side of fear. 
and I'm very grateful that we're up here and um, we only have 1,600 meters to go. So. That was the toughest experience. So when I was climbing, my knees were like shaking, but I was grateful making it up. You know, you start off with making like a two-foot stride, then it goes down to a foot and a half stride, then a foot stride, and then eight inches, and you want to just keep that going all the time. It was a huge meditative time for me. It's the end of a long day, but we'll get there. 100 more meters. very tired. You see, like today we did two days in one. Towards the end, I felt like giving up and sitting down. <laughs> but I thank God he has, given, he has given me the energy to reach the camp, and I am so grateful. Right now, we can see the last path that we'll be taking tomorrow very early in the morning to reach the peak and then go back. I kind of regret that I haven't done this earlier in life. Not because I'm tired, but because it's an amazing experience. It's, it's really hard to define pushing yourself beyond the limit and just said, yeah, life can be this strong and big. You're, you're using every bit of energy just to breathe. And you're moving very slow. Like the supply of oxygen at that stellar point was not good. I was feeling nausea. I, I felt like maybe I'm going to give up. But uh, the guys that we were with, I felt encouraged and I felt I, I'd make it.
Done. It's important to learn what's that? What your pace actually is, even yeah. if it's a lot slower than you think it ought to be. Because it's sustainable. And the main thing is you get to the goal. And we did. It was totally freaking awesome. One, two, three, Kelly! Kelly. One, two, three, Thrive! Yeah. One, two, three, Amazing Guy! Amazing Guy! And one, two, three, we're heading home! We're, we're headed home. home, it's all downhill. Here I am. Hey. I'm good. I'm an energetic. Very good. Yeah? You know, I was doing a lot of meditative stuff. I was doing a lot of praying and um, uh, that seemed to be a real resource to me. But uh, I was actually so surprised at how encouraging uh, the team were for each other, just quietly, all us walking together. Uh, it was like a team and it was uh, such an amazing sort of sense of, of uh, trying to do it together. Oh, it was a great team. Uh, I did love the team. It was a strong team and we kept on uh, encouraging each other and that's why all of us made to the top and uh, and uh, they were everybody was very excited once we made to the top so i can say it was a great team we had the old the middle age uh, the young so we did very well we did very well Kilimanjaro taught me something that every journey starts with a step and there is nothing that is impossible. In life, you have to utilize the opportunity that you've got. And as Thrive for Good and as I'm work I've been working for Thrive for Good, I really, that I really think that this is a very great opportunity to work in such an environment. I just see so much potential in Africa, as we've said a number of times, that 25% of the best farmland in the world is in Africa and 80% is not used. That's why personally I feel whatever we are doing and going organically or growing foods organically is the best way to go because it will solve most of these problems with health, health issues and also the depletion of the soil. The hope that I have in the future for my kids, our families and our communities is that they'll come to understand or they'll grow uh, uh, getting this knowledge and then they can uh, grow healthy and also live longer because at least with this kind of knowledge it is it is giving hope that people can just live uh, long by having healthy food and also uh, doing uh, or farming the right way.